Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about method calling in Java. Now when it comes to defining the methods, I have been talking about methods throughout this particular series and the syntax is pretty familiar where you first specify the access modifier, then you specify the return type, then you specify the actual name of the method and after that you specify all the arguments which this method is going to accept and inside the curly braces you do your calculation and based on the return type you return an appropriate value we have seen many examples of it and let me show you a quick example to just understand the method anatomy better and then we will talk about how do we pass arguments to methods so in this simple class student i have some properties i have constructor and then i have methods these all are also simply methods we can see we have an access modifier which will decide whether this particular method should be visible to the outside world or not you can also either remove this particular access modifier or make the method private if you want or you can also make the method protected if you want so all of the possibilities are there and that uh, and what uh, what kind of access modifier will you keep depends upon upon your use case so that is the access modifier and then if your method is not supposed to return anything then you would just say void void is the default keyword in java which is used for use cases when you do not want to return something void just means empty or nothing so when you have nothing to return you are going to put void you cannot skip this if you remove if you remove this the method signature is not complete so you have to provide this there is no way around it so you need to provide the method return type after that you provide the name of the method this is a free text string and you can name it whatever you want just follow the camel casing convention where you start with a small alphabet and for every new word in the method name you start with the first letter as capital after that you put normal braces and you supply the arguments which this particular method is going to accept for example if this method was about calculating interest then probably you might supply the interest rate as the argument and the principal as the argument if this method was about calculating the price of the car then you might supply all the different mileage details and the manufacturing details which would decide the price of the car so it depends upon what you are doing and that's how you will understand what kind of arguments your method is going to need when you define the arguments you need to define the data type of the argument and again a name which you can give it give it as anything this is again a free text string and after that it depends upon you what kind of logic you want to write inside the method the basic need for writing a method is to not do the same thing again and again at every place if you have a functionality let's say if i take the same example if you have to calculate interest and the interest calculation logic is required at let's say 15 different places in your application then just create a single method for calculating the interest rate or the interest and then just reuse that method again and again uh, at different points in your application just call that method that's that's how we use it so that is the basic idea of creating a method to keep reusing the functionality over and over again across all the different methods in your application let's take another example of this particular method because it has a return statement again i sp specify a public access modifier i specify the return type which is string in this case then i specify a name of the method and i can also choose not to supply any argument if the method does not need any argument to do its computation or to run its logic if you put a return type any any other return type then void then void here then you have to provide a return statement the return statement will be the last execution step of your method remember that the return statement will be the last execution step of your method execution this has to be provided if you provide a return type other than void inside your method in this particular case this method expects a string return type which means when i call get name i should get a result back which should be of type string then i need to write a return statement and return a variable which should be of string type for example if i just change this method to say let's say if i say int i equal to 1 
and if I say return I this is going to give you an error you see there's a compilation error and if you hover over the balloon icon it says cannot convert from int to string it is trying to convert this particular return type and trying to match this into this particular return type and it's not able to match int to string so you get you get an error so it has to exactly match the return type the data type of the of the return uh, value which you have put here it has to match match exactly with the with the return statement variable type if it doesn't match you're going to get a compilation error that's the first thing now there might be scenarios where you have multiple branches of execution in your method for example if you have if let's say if i just uh, use this condition of i equal to 1 and i write if i equal to equal to 1 then return let's say a test string else return the name i'll just cut this and put it here and we'll change this to name this is also possible and this is possible because of the same statement which i told you earlier that return statement has to be the last execution step of your method execution in this particular method there are two branches of execution this is one branch and this is the other branch at a particular time either the if block or the else block is going to get executed there would never be a case that both of the blocks get executed in the same execution cycle it will always be either this block or this block and that's why if you use these kind of statements then you have to provide return type in each of the branches you can also do something like this let's say if i say string return var equal to null and then i say control c control v i assign test string to the return var and then here also i assign name string to the return var and at the end i say a single return and i say return var this is also fine because here i am just assigning different values in the if block and the else block and this, then just returning the placeholder variable which is also absolutely fine so you can use either of the way the better way is to return from within the branch itself so this was a quick tour for you to see how methods work and what kind of anatomy method represent now let me just quickly revert everything which i did here and bring it back to return name that's good and now let's talk about the method calling pa patterns and how do we call the methods so for that i have prepared a class called method calling demo it has a public static void main method and here i have just declared a simple variable i and initialize the value of i as one then i'm calling a method which is named as change value and if you go to this particular method it has a very simple implementation it is accepting the argument which i created here I'm, I'm passing this particular variable as an argument to this method and then whatever argument i supply i'm incrementing that argument by one and just return and, and, and not returning anything from here just incrementing the value of i and that's it and after that i'm printing i so what would be your guess here what would be the value here i'm going to pause here for a moment and to let you think about what is going to happen okay i hope you have uh, you would have done some calculations in your head to see what is going to happen and what is the value of i eventually at line 8 let's run this program to understand that okay so i had initialized i as 1 then i passed the value of i in this particular argument and i said i equal to i plus 1 so it should be 1 plus 1 equal to 2 and i the new value of i should be 2 but at line 8 i still get i as 1 why is that happening it's happening because of the concept of pass by value remember that concept that in java every argument which you pass to a method is passed by value and not by reference in simple language what does it mean is that when you pass this particular argument a copy of this particular argument is uh, a copy of this particular variable is passed to the method argument it's not the exact same variable we are not passing the same reference of i here we are passing a copy of it a unique local copy of it that's why whatever you do with i inside this met particular method is not going to change the state of i which is defined here because it is passed by value or in simple language the object is copied over locally to the method it's not the same reference which is being passed upon that's why you see this value if you want to get the return value then the one way is to just change the return type and say return i and then just store this return i value here saying int result equal to whatever is returned from here and we are returning the new i here and then you can print the result and you will get two if i run this now 
I get IS2. So this is to just to validate that this is everything in Java is passed by value. There is no concept of pass by reference when we talk about method calling in Java. Let's take a more complicated example. This was a simple variable. Let's go back to the student.java. So I have the student class here. Let's create some objects of it and try to follow the same pattern. So here I have created an object of the student class named John age 25 address 23 East California. I'm doing some sysouts which are not really important here, but let me just uncomment this particular method. So here what I'm doing is I'm calling a method. I'm basically defining a method which says change name in the same object and I'm supplying the student object. So the student object gets here and then I'm overwriting the name in the student object. That's what I'm doing here. So now let's just call this particular method and see what happens. So I'm going to call this particular method here and pass the object John inside it. And then let's try to print the name of the object referenced by John. If I say get name. So I'm calling this particular method passing the uh, uh, John object here where I'm overwriting the name John with Jane and then I'm printing the new name of the John object. Let's see what happens now. So if I run this particular program, yes, I can see that the name has been overwritten from John to Jane now. This happened because you passed the reference pointed to the object inside the method and then you overwrote the name in, uh, uh, on the object which was pointed by this particular reference. So here you might think that this is passed by reference, but this is still passed by value because this reference is not the same reference as this one. This is a different reference, but both references are pointing to the same object. That is the only commonality here. So you can mutate a particular object inside a method and be very careful of that. Do not ever try to do that because it is going to create a lot of unpredictable results for you because it might be possible that you're calling a particular method from some other application which is doing a lot of changes in the same argument object which you supplied and then you don't know what is the state of it. So it's a very dangerous pattern and very dangerous way to mutate the objects. Do not do this. Let's find another way to deal with this problem. If I don't want to mutate the same object, how do I solve that problem? So we can solve that problem simply by creating a new object and changing whatever we want to change. So I have an, one more method here which says change name in a different object. It is also accepting the student object and then here it is creating a new student object and here it is overwriting the name but getting the age and the address as the same values from the argument. So we keep the age and the address same but we create a new name but we don't overwrite the same object. We create a new object. And then we can return this particular new object if we want to. I can do clear this and I can say return new student. And then I can store the value of this particular method calling. I can call this method here, supply the same argument as John. Let me comment this one. And then I can store the value of the result, student result obj. And I get the value here. And then I can say result obj dot get name. And if I run this program now, remember I'm calling a different method now, which is going to create a new object and then uh, change the value. I do get the same effect, but now my previous object John is not touched at all. It is safe and sound. I can reuse this John object anywhere in my method, in my application, and I can be assured that nothing is changing in terms of the state of the object. So always follow this particular pattern whenever you are calling methods and passing arguments to the method. And if those arguments happen to be your custom classes and even Java classes, in fact, then always try to create a new copy of the object inside the method if you intend to mutate or change the state of the object. Now this session is getting a bit longer, so I would just like to stop it here. And in the next session, we are going to talk about exceptions in Java. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.